In the vast and varied terrains of the ancient Roman Empire in 52 BCE, a disciplined and formidable force marched. Led by the one and only Gaius Julius Caesar, they were determined to leave a legacy of conquest and violence. The Siege of Elysia, a town in Gaul, stands as a testament to Roman military genius and engineering prowess. Traps and obstacles never seen before were used to keep the Gauls from escaping the town and preventing any external forces to enter. But what were these deadly devices designed to demoralize, maim and kill, and how did they come to define the conflict and siege? From the sharp, stake-filled pits known as Lilia, to the imposing walls of circumvallation and contravallation, these ingeniously cruel innovations claimed countless lives and left entire nations physically and emotionally subdued. These were not merely tools of war, but symbols of Roman ingenuity and dominion. As the military strategist Vegetius once wrote, the most valiant defence is the one that is not assaulted. The fortifications and traps of the Roman legions exemplified this philosophy, sowing fear amongst foes and forcing them to confront an enemy as disciplined in not fighting as they were in battle. Join us as we venture into the treacherous battlegrounds of the ancient world, exploring the sinister use of Roman military traps that instilled terror in the hearts of adversaries. Welcome to the Chronicles of the Raven. Lilia, Pits of Peril. Before showing the brutality of the Romans in the Siege of Elysia and how they placed these traps for carnage, we must explore the world of Roman traps, and few traps were as feared or as effective as the Lilia. These were meticulously crafted pitfalls, each hiding a single lethal stake, known as a stimulus, which were as thick as a man's thigh. The lilia were deployed in a quincunx pattern, the five side of a standard die, and were covered with foliage to conceal their sinister intentions, further exacerbated by the fact their name, lilia, was simply because they looked like lily flowers, designed to break the momentum of charging enemies and instill a lingering fear in those who dared traverse Roman-held territories Lilia were a testament to the cunning and cruel efficiency of Roman warfare. Typically three feet deep, or just under a metre, these pits were arranged in patterns to maximise damage. The bottom of each pit concealed a sharpened wooden stake, which could be smeared with faeces or poison, to ensure that even a non-fatal wound would become a life-threatening ordeal. Camouflaged with branches, leaves and surrounding vegetation, these traps were nearly invisible to the advancing enemy waiting silently for the unwary footstep that would trigger their deadly embrace. They were not just traps, but manifestations of the Roman dedication to psychological and physical warfare, turning the very earth into an enemy. Predominantly used during the Gallic Wars, Lilia were instrumental in Caesar's siege strategies, debilitating enemy forces and sowing terror among troops. They were strategically positioned to maximize injuries and hinder enemy movements, contributing significantly to Roman military successes. As Roman soldiers laid siege to Elysia, these traps formed a lethal perimeter, a silent army waiting for the Gauls' desperate attempts to escape or the relief force's doomed effort to break the siege. Each pit was a story of agony and terror. The placement of Lilia was never random. Roman engineers were artists of war and chose locations based on enemy movement patterns, natural terrain features and strategic value. They were often placed in front of other defensive structures to weaken enemy forces before they reached the main Roman lines or scattered around the camp to deter nighttime raids. The Lilia worked in silent concert with other defences, forming a lethal barrier that few could cross unscathed. Beyond the physical danger they posed, Lilia were instruments of psychological warfare. The unpredictability and invisibility of these traps made every step in contested territory a potential descent into agony. Roman soldiers would often hear the sudden screams of enemies who had unwittingly impaled themselves, their pain a stark reminder of the invisible threat lurking beneath the surface. The psychological toll on enemy morale and movement was immense, often causing hesitation and disorder within their ranks. Accounts from Roman soldiers and their adversaries alike tell of the gruesome fates met by those who fell victim to this simple but deadly trap. The pits were so feared that entire units would sometimes avoid seemingly advantageous terrain, simply out of concern for these hidden dangers. The legacy of Lelia continued long after the fall of the Roman Empire, influencing defensive strategies and reminding future generations of the ingenuity and ruthlessness of Roman warfare. Sippi and stimuli, forests of fear, another variety of ingenious traps that the Romans used on their marches of conquest were the Sippi and stimuli. 
These were not mere obstacles, but a deadly forest of stakes designed to maim, snag, and slow down any who dared confront the might of Rome. Positioned around camps or in the path of enemy advances, Sippi and Stimuli turned favorable ground into fields of slaughter. Sippi, robustly sharpened branches that were driven deep into the ground and were designed to catch the flesh and gear of attackers, tearing through their ranks with brutal efficiency. These traps with numerous spikes protruding at various angles, creating a hazardous zone nearly impossible to navigate without injury, were not alone with the Lilia, for the Romans also placed stimuli, usually as the first traps along the path towards battle. These were large metal iron spikes, or hooks. Notice the edge of the design. Once that enters the flesh, it will do even more damage upon being removed. The whimsical names of these traps, with sippy meaning gravestone or mile marker, show the normalization of this violence to the Roman soldier. As always, this was psychological, not only for themselves, but also to instill fear upon any army that approached. These traps were vicious, as rather than necessarily kill, they would disable in great pain. The design of these traps varied, with some tailored to impede infantry and others designed to break cavalry charges, demonstrating the Romans' adaptive approach to warfare and mastery over their enemy's psychology. Throughout the Gallic Wars and in numerous other campaigns, Sippi and Stimuli were a common sight around Roman fortifications. Their presence is noted in historical accounts of battles and sieges, where they turned the tide by breaking the momentum of enemy forces. During the Siege of Alesia, these traps formed a crucial part of Caesar's defensive strategy, contributing to the containment and eventual defeat of the Gallic forces, a conflict we'll explore later in the video. The deployment of Tippi and Stimuli was a masterclass in Roman military engineering. Engineers would survey the terrain, identifying choke points, likely routes of enemy advance, or areas around the camp requiring extra protection. These traps were then meticulously placed to create layers of defence, forcing the enemy into a slow, painful approach, all while under the constant threat of Roman projectiles and sorties. The strategic placement of these spiked barricades turned the landscape into a deadly maze, demonstrating the ancient world's depth of strategic thought and the Romans' understanding that the mind was as crucial a battlefield as the ground itself. Upon discovery, the mere sight of a landscape bristling with these traps was enough to demoralize even the bravest of enemies. The uncertainty of navigating through them, coupled with the visible wounds of those who had tried and failed, created an atmosphere of dread. Enemies knew that even if they braved the spikes, they would reach the Roman lines weakened and disorganized, easy prey for the waiting legionnaires. Surviving texts and accounts from both Romans and their enemies speak of the carnage wrought by Sippi and Stimuli. Graves, the cavalry's nightmare. The next trap to be explored are known as graves, which you might think, after explanation, are the same as Sippi. But here, there is a more cruel desire. In the pantheon of Roman military traps, graves held a special place of dread, particularly among the cavalry. These larger and deeper pits, filled with multiple sharpened stakes, were designed to break the charge of horsemen and create disarray among enemy formations. Hidden beneath deceptive camouflage, graves awaited the unsuspecting or the reckless, ready to turn the tide of battle with their hidden violence. The construction of graves required careful planning and execution. Each pit was dug deep into the earth. Most of them were trapezoidal in shape, with some at the siege of Elysia being V-shaped. They could also be filled with water, like they were at Elysia, in order to drive infection, and in some cases, drowning just simply due to how soldiers and horses would fall and impale themselves. Paired up in a row before reaching the final walls of the Roman defense, survivors thus far would no doubt be exhausted, and the challengers to Rome would have lost countless soldiers. Graves were used in many of the same contexts as Lilia, particularly in defensive situations where the Romans expected to face heavy assaults or cavalry charges. Their effectiveness in disrupting and demoralizing enemy forces is noted in several historical sources, with the siege of Elysia, again, serving as a prime example. Here, Caesar's engineers used graves in conjunction with other traps to create a nearly impenetrable barrier around the besieged town, ensuring that any attempt to relieve or break the siege would end in disaster. We will further investigate this later in the video. The placement of graves was strategic, often located just beyond the first line of more visible defences. This placement ensured that even if the enemy managed to navigate the initial obstacles, they would be funnelled into these deadly pits, 
In some instances, graves were used to channel enemies into kill zones, where Roman archers or ballistae could finish the work the traps had begun. The deep pits and sharp stakes could easily break the legs of charging horses or impale the riders, rendering one of the most potent elements of ancient warfare ineffective. The psychological impact on cavalry units, knowing that any charge could end in a gruesome death, was profound and often caused these forces to hesitate or refuse to advance altogether. Descriptions of battlefields after the engagement often tell of the horror of graves. The ground would be littered with the bodies of men and horses, the stakes of the graves painted with blood and flesh. The site served as a grim reminder of the fate awaiting those who underestimated Roman defensive preparations. Graves exemplified the Empire's willingness to use any means necessary to secure victory, combining engineering, strategy, and an intimate understanding of the horrors of war. Tribuli, known also as caltrops, the battlefield's menacing spikes. The tribuli, or caltrops, were a simple yet brutal tool in the Roman arsenal, designed to maim and slow down the enemy. Scattered in the paths of advancing troops or cavalry, these tetrahedral spikes were a menace to foot soldiers and beasts alike. Their presence on the battlefield represented a pervasive threat, turning the ground into an enemy in its own right. Each tribulus was a small spike device with four points, ensuring that one spike was always upright, ready to pierce through the sole of a shoe or the hoof of a horse. Made from hardened iron or steel, they were durable and could be used and reused, causing lasting pain, injury and disease. Their simple design was their effectiveness, causing enemies to tread carefully or risk debilitating injuries. Tribuli were employed in various scenarios, from open field battles to protect flanks, to sieges where they were scattered around Roman camps or under the cover of darkness in enemy paths. They were particularly effective against cavalry, neutralizing the speed and mobility that made horsemen so formidable. Historical accounts speak of battles where the tide was turned by the crippling effect of these seemingly innocuous spikes. The personal toll of tribuli was immense. Soldiers and animals alike could be crippled by these spikes, leading to infections, long-term injuries, limb amputation and immediate incapacitation. The psychological effect was equally damaging. The fear of stepping on a hidden caltrop could slow down an advance, break a charge or cause panic within ranks. The chaos they induced was not just physical, but mental, as armies had to contend with an invisible yet ever-present danger. The Romans were masters at adapting their tactics to different enemies and terrains. In areas where larger beasts, such as elephants, were used, larger tribuli were employed. In more densely packed battlefields, smaller, more numerous caltrops were scattered to cover larger areas. Their adaptability made them a versatile and enduring component of Roman military strategy. These spikes continued to be used in various forms throughout history, evolving into modern equivalents still seen on battlefields today. Tribuli were more than just a physical trap. They were a symbol of the pervasive and persistent danger that Roman enemies had to face. Carceries, trapping gates, the deceptive entrapments. If all of those traps weren't enough to show the ruthlessness of the Romans without even entering combat, the carceries should do so as they were insidious traps. Disguised as part of fortifications or even as seemingly innocent structures within urban environments, these trapping gates were nightmares for any soldier unfortunate enough to be lured in. Once inside, a variety of mechanisms could trigger, sealing the fate of the entrapped. Carceries varied in design but typically involved a series of gates or walls that could be quickly and quietly closed, trapping soldiers inside. The interior was often lined with other deadly traps, such as pits, spikes, or even hidden soldiers ready to dispatch the trapped enemies. The construction of carceries required a deep understanding of mechanics and psychology, as they had to be enticing enough to lure in enemies, yet deadly enough to ensure they did not escape. Carceries were particularly useful in urban warfare, where buildings and streets could be rigged to become deadly traps. They were also employed in sieges, both as defensive mechanisms within Roman camps or cities and as traps during the assault on enemy fortifications. Accounts from ancient texts and archaeological findings suggest that these traps could be incredibly complex and devastatingly effective. The effective use of carceries depended on careful planning and flawless execution. Soldiers had to be trained to lure enemies in without revealing the trap, 
and signalmen had to be ready to trigger the mechanisms at just the right moment. The strategic placement of Carceris could turn the tide of a battle, creating choke points, eliminating elite units, or simply sowing chaos and fear among enemy ranks. The fear of the unknown is a powerful weapon, and Carceres exploited this to the fullest. The dread of what might lie within a seemingly abandoned building or behind a mysteriously open gate could paralyze soldiers, making them hesitant to advance or pursue. For those who did fall prey to a Carcer, the terror was all too real, as they found themselves trapped and at the mercy of Roman soldiers or the cruel devices hidden within. Evidence of carceries is rarer than other types of Roman traps, likely due to their often temporary and situational nature. However, accounts from ancient texts and some archaeological findings have provided insights into how they might have been constructed and used. These discoveries help paint a picture of a military that valued cunning and innovation as much as strength and discipline. Carceres were a manifestation of the darkest aspects of Roman military strategy. They exemplified the Romans' willingness to use deception, fear and brutality to secure victory. Sudis, stake walls, the impenetrable barriers. These were not hidden traps, they were obvious traps, a dare. The Sudis were a quintessential part of Roman fortifications, embodying the empire's defensive strength. These tall, robust stakes, driven deep into the ground, formed impenetrable barriers that could halt even the most determined invaders. Sudi stakes were typically made from strong, durable wood, sharpened to a point and sometimes hardened by fire. Arranged in dense rows, they created walls that were virtually impassable, especially when combined with other defensive elements. The construction of Sudi's walls was a labor-intensive process reflecting the Romans' commitment to creating formidable, lasting obstacles in the quest for expansion. Throughout their conquest, the Romans utilised Sudis in various scenarios, from quickly erected defensive perimeters around temporary camps to more permanent structures in their military fortifications. They were a common sight in the borderlands of the Empire, where the threat of incursion was constant. The Sudis' adaptability to different environments and enemy tactics made them a versatile and reliable component of Roman military strategy. Beyond serving as defensive walls, Sudis were sometimes used in offensive siege warfare, providing cover for advancing troops or engineers. The Romans also developed variations of the basic Sudis design, including angled or interlocking stakes, to counter specific threats or adapt to different terrain. The psychological impact of Sudis on enemy forces was significant. The dense forest of sharpened stakes presented a physical and mental barrier, making clear the deadly risks of any attempt to breach Roman defences. The sight of a Sudi's wall reinforced the perception of Roman invincibility, often leading attackers to seek less fortified targets or to despair of victory altogether. Archaeological evidence of Sudi's has been found in Roman military sites across Europe and beyond, giving insight into their construction and widespread use. Studies of these artefacts have revealed the Romans' attention to detail and standardization in their military engineering. Plutae, mobile shields, the movable bastions. Plutae were versatile mobile shields used by Roman soldiers to protect themselves during sieges and battles. These large, maneuverable barriers allowed the Romans to advance or defend with greater safety, turning the tide of many confrontations. Ingeniously, the Romans sometimes used Plutae to conceal other traps or soldiers, making them an offensive tool as much as a defensive one. While their use is obvious, the fact that they were used to cover traps would lure in curious enemies to the demons beneath. Constructed from sturdy materials like wood and reinforced with metal or leather, Plutae could withstand significant punishment from enemy projectiles. Their design often included wheels or handles for easy movement, allowing soldiers to reposition them quickly in response to changing battlefield conditions. This mobility made Plutae an essential component of Roman siegecraft and field tactics. Plutae were employed in various military scenarios, from open battles to the tight confines of urban combat. During sieges, they provided cover for soldiers and engineers as they approached walls or worked to undermine enemy fortifications. Beyond this simple use, however, the Romans developed several types of Plutae, tailored to different needs and situations. Some were larger, designed to protect groups of soldiers, while others were smaller and more personal. 
There were even specialized plutae, equipped with additional features like small catapults or openings for archers, enhancing their offensive capabilities. For the Roman soldiers, plutae were not just physical shields, but also a source of psychological comfort. Knowing they had this movable cover allowed them to advance with greater confidence and reduce the fear of enemy missiles or sudden charges. For the enemies of Rome, the sight of an advancing wall of Plutae was often intimidating, signalling an organised and well-protected foe. Falses morales, wall hooks, the terrors of the walls. In the brutal sieges that marked Roman warfare, falces morales were a feared weapon used to dismantle enemy defences and drag defenders from their positions. These large curved hooks, mounted on long poles or affixed to siege engines, represented the Romans' aggressive approach to siege warfare, tearing down the walls and morale of their adversaries. Definitely not a trap in the conventional sense, but used in conjunction with the others in the video, formed a dominating military even before soldiers engaged. These wall hooks were typically made from strong metal and designed to hook onto walls, battlements, or even individuals. Soldiers or machines would wield these hooks to pull apart enemy fortifications, making breaches for the Roman legions to exploit. The size and shape of the hooks varied depending on their specific use, from pulling down individual stones to grappling larger structural elements. These hooks were a common feature in Roman sieges, used to weaken or dismantle enemy walls and towers. Their effectiveness in removing defenders or creating openings in fortifications was well documented in various military campaigns throughout the Empire's history. The fear and destruction they caused were integral to the Roman siege strategy, allowing them to break the will and defences of those they sought to conquer. The use of falses morales required coordination between the soldiers operating them and those ready to exploit the breaches they created. They were often used in conjunction with other siege engines like catapults and battering rams in a concerted effort to overwhelm and penetrate enemy defences. The sight of Falces Morales in action was terrifying for those on the receiving end. Defenders knew that their fortifications, once their greatest protection, could be turned into their doom. The psychological impact of these hooks, coupled with the physical danger they posed, often led to a breakdown in morale and a hastening of surrender or retreat. Falces Morales were much more than tools of destruction. They were symbols of the relentless and adaptable nature of Roman warfare. They exemplified the Empire's commitment to victory at all costs, using every available means to break the bodies and spirits of their enemies. The legacy of these wall hooks is a stark reminder of the lengths to which the Romans would go to secure their dominion and expand their influence, which leads us to the Siege of Elysia and the role of traps. The Siege of Elysia in 52 BCE stands as one of the most storied military engagements in ancient history, primarily due to Julius Caesar's extensive use of fortifications and traps. This battle was the climax of Caesar's Gallic Wars and serves as a testament to the effectiveness of Roman military engineering and strategy. The Romans, facing both a fortified town and a large external relief force, constructed an elaborate series of defences and traps that played a critical role in their ultimate victory. Elysia, a significant Gallic stronghold, was chosen by Vercingetorix, the leader of the Gallic tribes, as a defensive position against the advancing Roman forces. Understanding the strategic importance of Elysia, Caesar laid siege to the town, encircling it with a series of fortifications known as circumvallation and contravallation. These were not mere walls, but complex systems of defenses that included ditches, wooden walls, towers, and a wide array of traps designed to prevent both breakouts from the town and any attempts at relief by external Gallic forces. They represent strategic military engineering techniques designed to fortify positions and control movement during extended sieges. Circumvallation is a method of building a fortified line, a wall, ditch or rampart, around the area being besieged. This is essentially a siege line that encircles the besieged city or fort to prevent the occupants from escaping and to block any incoming supplies or reinforcements. It was a means of tightening the grip on the besieged, making it difficult for them to sustain themselves over time. In the case of the Siege of Elysia, Caesar used circumvallation to encircle the Gallic stronghold, effectively trapping the inhabitants inside. This technique was critical in controlling the battlefield by ensuring that the Romans could maintain their siege without interference from external forces. Contravallation is the construction of a fortified line facing outward from the besieged area. 
this second line of fortification was meant to protect the besieging army from attacks by external forces coming to relieve the siege. It was essentially a defensive perimeter set up to guard against any incoming enemy reinforcements. During the siege of Elysia, as Caesar anticipated the arrival of a large Gallic relief force, he constructed lines of contravallation to defend his own troops and siege works. This outer line of defences was crucial in ensuring that the Roman army could continue the siege while also protecting themselves from being attacked from the outside. The Romans employed an extensive array of traps around Elysia, each serving a specific purpose in the overall siege strategy. A small sample included Lilia, Scipion stimuli, graves, stake walls, and no doubt every available method to control the enemy forces. As Julius Caesar encircled Elysia, he was acutely aware that the battle ahead was not just against the Gallic warriors within, but also against an inevitable relief force. His strategy, therefore, extended beyond a mere siege. It was a comprehensive plan involving psychological warfare, physical barriers, and the anticipation of every possible countermove by his adversaries. Caesar's own words describe the meticulous construction of defences around Elysia. He writes of Lilia as part of these fortifications, pits cunningly concealed and filled with stakes. In front of these, pits three feet in depth were dug, and in each of them a tapering stake was fixed. These stakes were a foot in length and sharpened at the top. These traps served a dual purpose, physically impeding and injuring attackers and sowing a relentless fear of the unseen, as the ground itself became a weapon against the Gauls. The tippy and stimuli were not merely physical barriers, but a psychological chess move. As the Gauls advanced, they were met not by the Romans themselves, but by an invisible, unyielding enemy. Each step became a potential descent into agony, with sharp spikes ready to maim or kill. Caesar's strategic placement of these spiked barricades turned the landscape into a deadly maze, a testament to his understanding that the mind was as crucial a battlefield as the ground itself. The Sudis formed walls that were daunting in their sheer impenetrability, while the Plute provided mobile protection, allowing the Romans to manoeuvre and adapt with shielded agility. Caesar likely utilised these defences to not only protect his troops, but also to control the flow of the battle, directing the Gauls into more vulnerable positions or into the range of his archers and artillery. As you can see, using the stimuli to already create harm, each trap became more violent before walls were reached. The graves, or fossa, were deep and troublesome, taking on a variety of shapes. As the Gallic relief force arrived, swelling with numbers and determination, they found themselves facing not just the disciplined Roman legions, but a landscape transformed into a living nightmare. The siege of Elysia became a gruelling test of endurance and will, with the Gauls repeatedly attempting to break through the Roman fortifications, each time being repelled by the deadly array of traps and the unwavering Roman defence. The turning point came as Caesar, seizing the moment of Gallic desperation and disarray, led a decisive sortie, a sudden attack made by troops coming out from a defensive position against both the besieged and the relievers. The Roman troops, protected by their plute and guided by the openings created by their traps, pushed the Gauls back, driving them into their own devices and turning the tide irreversibly in favour of the Romans. The fall of Elysia was a culmination of military strategy, engineering, and an unyielding command of the battlefield. The extensive use of traps, each serving its role in the larger design of Caesar's plan, demonstrated a level of foresight and ingenuity that has been studied and admired for centuries. The siege of Elysia and the traps employed by the Roman legions represent a pinnacle of ancient military engineering and strategy. The Romans were able to secure a victory that would resonate throughout history.